After the most exhausting another day from the likes of Friday, I now finally decided to able to drink my drink and hopefully I should be able to warm up and then hopefully try to continue things on. Hey, what is up everyone? I am Tiana here once again and I'm back for some more of yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some more of Let's Play of Donkey Kong Jungle Beat for the Nintendo GameCube slash Nintendo Wii. In this case, we're tackling through both versions just like usual. So last time, we had a very much uh, dominated for the most part in the Orange Kingdom that we did manage to take on Scruff Rock and we also managed to get ourselves uh, four of those crests, like usual, and on the Wii version, Deffy managed to obtain the second crown and also another three crests. So today for this episode is the fact that we're going to be taking on the forms of the GameCube versions, Watermelon Kingdom, and after that, Deffy will take on the forms of, what else? The Wii versions, uh, you know, Watermelon Kingdom. So the first level, as you can see, is actually a pretty fun level. It's called Monkey Fest. So basically, in this entire stage, as you can see, we need to get a lot of usage on... Well, it's a good thing you can able to actually pull off a lot of combos on this stage, because otherwise, if you do manage to able to pull this off just like so, and the more you collect those beats or bananas in the Wii version, then you would able to actually get yourselves the most insane amounts of those beats, as you can uh, as you can clearly tell. So yeah, as a result, it's a pretty fun level, all things considered. So either way, though, the only things you need to, uh, of course, try to avoid is, of course, a lot of enemies, as well as uh, we actually might as well come across into ourselves a lot of, like, swimming bees, as you can see right there. However, on the Wii version specifically, I don't think there's any that much different about the forms of the Wii version specifically. Well, besides the forms of one specific change in the forms of this level in the uh, the GameCube release, as well as the Wii versions considerably, that was these guys right there that has been there on the GameCube version, and uh, because you can able to obviously eat them. And holy macaroni, we got a lot more beats than the forms of how it does than what we're used to. So either way, we got about 872 beats, so I think we've actually got 300 or more to able to actually reach for about 1200 to able to get ourselves, hopefully get a chance to get ourselves, you know, our four crests, which are obviously bronze, silver, gold, and platinum specifically. So anyways, here we go on to this next level, as you can see, Desert Oasis, so it's basically it's like a desert theme level, as you can tell. So there's not much anything else to say about this level, though, honestly, it's just the fact the matter is that it takes place in the desert, so... But, you know, you get the idea. So yeah, today's day is the fault of, uh, according to this uploading schedule today, today's day is, uh, oh jeez, I forgot about these purple variations, as you can see. Like, as you can see, with these purple variations of the some sort of equivalent enemies as in from the beginning, they're now basically trying to eat you with the actual beats themselves. So yeah, it's got to stay sharp on that one, so... And also, we come across into these enemies, which, uh, basically in order to actually just, to, for sake of defeating those, you have to basically just clap and clap them in midair, and then you're gonna have to able to actually just to grab them, and then just try to, well, do a, some sort of like a dunk to, uh, to the ground, which even then, it's kind of hard to explain about that sometimes. So anyways, let's go ahead and head on to this particular portion here, and as you can see with those roots sticking out in the ground, well, we just have to simply just grab all them, so that way you can able to get, what else? Some more beats. Unless if I was trying to perform uh, a lot more combos on that thing, but either way though, sometimes it can be pretty difficult sometimes to try to able to pull off certain movesets with all these uh, combo tricks in mind, especially when if we get onto uh, the later kingdoms in this version, then it should take a bit of practice to able to actually get a lot of usage on that. Well, unlike the Wii version on the other hand though, it's pretty simple and easy, but in this version in particular, it might, uh, might take some time until you're able to actually pull off some certain combos and tricks and everything, so I just want to point that out. So anyways, let's take down this little uh, exact same enemy as we've already come across into in the Banana Kingdom, so there's not much else to tell. However though, in a Wii version specifically, they did at least manage to add a new feature for this throughout, which I'm sure Daffy will point that out whenever he gets into this stage specifically. So either way, let's get onto this little, uh, you know, this little bungee little thing here, and grab some more beats for this little segment here, and I think we should be okay for the most part though, if we manage to able to try to go ahead and get ourselves 
uh, four of those crests in this kick. Oh my lord, that was actually really close. I was gonna screw things up on that, specifically on that segment here, especially in this case right here. So hopefully we should be able to actually get the insane amount of those speeds. I don't think we can get that enemy from the left, because I'm obviously focusing on the right, as you can see, so even then there's not much else to really think of, so... Anyways, let's grab ourselves 116 beats, so I think we can expect able to go enough as it goes by, so... Oh boy, whenever we get onto the forms of the Sixth Kingdom, it should be a lot more fun when it comes to performing a lot of combos with that specific stuff. So anyways, uh, maybe once in a while we actually come across into those uh, little pick minions as you can see right there. Which basically these, uh, this guy right here, we have to simply just toss these coconuts right back at him. You have to do it like three times by the way in order to actually just to progress. And also just trying to get some more beads in the process right here. And then and if you've done so already, then the watermelon will be able to appear. So even then there's not much else to really think of. So anyways, let's, up, uh, let's just go ahead and just have a single bite on that watermelon. And do this thing again, and we come across into, what else, the next boss fight, which apparently is another new type of boss fight, and that appears to be, I don't know if you call this like a pink, uh, the pig kind of syndrome, but to be more accurate, it's just a hog itself. So here we go with the first hog boss, which appears to be the rogue hog. And there's not much around here, it's just the fact the matter is though, it's just a simple battle arena. Oh okay, yeah, one thing I totally forgot to say about this for the most part is the fact that since after all we did manage to reach for about the certain amount to get ourselves the actual, uh, the crests from, and basically, uh, the actual amount of health that we've got, um, uh, is all depending on different colors depending on the forms of how much beats you have. Like, I presume the actual health bar I've got is actually based off from that gray color, which I think that's pretty much obvious. So yeah, the entire battle itself with the actual dealing with the hog, it's pretty simple. Basically, we need to send the coconut right back at the forms of the hawk itself. So that way you can able to deal the amount of damage on him. And also try to able to stun him for a few seconds until you're able to, what else? Just keep on beating the likes out of him. So even then, no. Pretty simple for the most part though. But it gets progressively harder as you progress until likely in the later kingdoms and beyond. So even then, no. That pretty much takes care of the forms of, what else, the Watermelon Kingdom in a GameCube version. So once again, no damage on this boss fight, unlike, um, Scruff Rock from the previous video. So, there's not much else to really say. So either way though, and yep, we did manage to get ourselves, once again, all four of those crests. However though, in the GameCube version, it doesn't really tell you that how much, uh, beats you need to able to require for those specifically... Uh, for those quests in mind, unlike the Wii version, just to make things a little bit easier on the Wii version, just in case if you really want to 100% for everything, and also Donkey Kong doesn't wear his crown on the uh, the GameCube version, as you can tell. I'm pretty sure Debbie has already pointed things out right away, so either way though, yeah, it's just another tutorial kind of clip, so even then, though, if you're trying to grab those bananas while walking, you get lesser amounts, but if you do clap, then you get more amounts, so... Yeah, that concludes that, and on to you, Mr. Duffy, for the Wii version of the Watermelon Kingdom. Alright, now it's my turn to deal with the, of course, the Watermelon Kingdom on the Wii version. So either way, uh, pretty much exactly the same levels, except obviously what Tiana has already mentioned, is the fact that there does have some several differences in several levels worth mentioning for, including um, Desert Oasis, which we'll talk more about it until later. So even then, I suppose another thing that Tiana has not even mentioned about this on the, uh, the GameCube version of specifically in certain kingdoms is the fact that, as you can see, See on the beats counter, when if you start the level off, well specifically the normal kingdoms for that matter, um, in the GameCube version always starts off as 20 beats, just in case you don't instantly uh, get died from the forms of certain enemy contact if you have like uh, no uh, beats whatsoever. Whilst in the forms of the Wii version, as you can see, it starts off just, well, zero beats, or zero bananas to be more precise. So. A little bit different, but uh, at least that's something. So either way though, let's just go ahead and get some more uh, beats here, or bananas, due to the forms of trapped inside these uh, bubbles, as you can see. So, still, Monkey Fest was actually a pretty fun level to able to perform a lot of combos with, because as you can see, that we're almost at the 700 uh, beats mark, so, or bananas uh, counter. So, at least depending on the forms of how we fat that, I would try to get that one up over there, but I think we've actually got enough as it is, so... 
Anyways, let's go ahead and keep on climbing things up. Plus, the music is actually pretty catchy as well. Yeah, with these old Munchie guys, they appeared on the GameCube version, while the Wii version, it just simply just got replaced by the actual Bumblebee itself, which, there's no point in trying to deal with him anyway, because we've already done the level, obviously. And to top it off, we actually got about 50 bananas left until we reach for that certain amount for the, what else? The 1,000 bananas mark, so... Yeah, as you can see on the Desert Oasis level is the fact that it does have some, what else, some several differences here, such as we now have electrical stuff that we need to avoid, and second of all is the fact that whenever we come towards the middle portion of the level, then we might actually come across into the most uh, important differences than he forms of how it does it on the GameCube version, is that normally in the GameCube version doesn't have the checkpoint system, because all you really have to do is just basically, it's kind of like the arcade, it kind of like, Progression in terms of, well, basically for everything. So, anyways, let's. Ah, oh, shoot. Yeah, as you can see, thankfully, we d we're still pretty much gonna be safe for the most part, though. But then again, if you run out of all of your health, then you lose a life. But if you do run out of lives, then it's basically a game over on this version of the game. Unlike the GameCube counterparts, where basically, if you run out of all of the beats in a kingdom, then basically, you would guarantee you can get yourself a game over in the process. So. Something's worth pointing out. So, anyways, let's go ahead and get some more beats from not only comes up from the actual uh, that little root seed, but it's also trying to able to what else grab some more bananas from the roots from the ground right here to create. Actually, let's try to get ourselves. Although I would try to able to actually just go ahead and grab some more um, combo performances like we already uh, trying to perform like that. But um, I think we're going to be perfectly fine as it goes by because after all. Uh, if, if you go all the way from here, then you would get some more bananas during that segment. Whilst unlike the uh, the GameCube version, the original version of the game, doesn't seem to have that segment. And also, Cactus was there, as opposed to those weird enemies they actually appeared in the GameCube version, so... Yeah, she... I uh, kind of think about it though, we're actually really looking forward to able to actually doing this game again because not only because I found this game to be quite a blast to play, specifically in the Wii version back in the day, but it's actually pretty fun to able to actually decide to compare to the actual several different level layouts between the Wii version compared to the GameCube release. So just in case if you guys can clearly tell some several differences from here. So anyways, let's take down this enemy here. You know, if we get some more bananas from this, uh, for this segment here, and we should probably guarantee we can able to actually, just for the sake of time, we basically pretty much dominated for most kingdoms so far in the Wii version, so... Yeah, that's all I can go Okay, so let's see what's in here, just a 1-up coin, and some more health that we definitely need to get. And these are these little blue leaves, as you can see right there, which actually represents the checkpoints, which even then, though, if you somehow die in a level, uh, you can able to actually respawn to what you got into. So thankfully, in this version of the game, it does encourage you to able to actually respawn to what you got back into. Unlike the GameCube version, if you somehow get a game over, you have to restart the whole entire kingdom again. Which I don't mind about it too much. Ah, son of a biscuit, stupid little bees. All these little swans, or for that matter. But luckily, it got ourselves more health, so that really does matter to me, though. So anyways, let's go ahead and... Oh, I did screw it up for that combo thing right there. But that's okay, because we've already just managed to reach for that certain amount for simply just trying to obtain the... Well, in this version in particular, that one thing I totally forgot to mention is the fact that the actual uh, clap attack doesn't have that much reach this time around compared to the forms that the GameCube version was released. Probably because of how the fact that in the GameCube version does requires you to able to play with, or recommend you able to play in a game within, of course, the DK Bongos themselves. So, either way though, that's, uh, that's not the case on the Wii version this time around. So, either way though, I just want to point it out. Instead, you're able to actually get ourselves just a, uh, uh, just a straightforward clap, and that's all you really have to think of. Although, just like in the GameCube version, you still come across into the specific, exactly the same guy as the forms of how it does it in, uh, the GameCube counterparts, except, well, obviously it just makes things a little bit easier for ourselves, so. And the watermelon should be appeared by now. And is anything in here? Nothing is in that specifically on the right side, so. Anyways, let's grab some more bananas, and hopefully we'll come across into the exact same boss fight as in the forms of the previous version, that's what Tiana's already tackled through. Which is pretty obvious that it's uh, Rogue Hawk, so even then there's not much else different about this boss fight, so either way though, let's, let's beat this guy down. 
And yeah, Cody Finger Bouncy Dog, we've, uh, well, you know, just got out to do the same thing. So Ethan and I'll let's go ahead and send this Coconut back at him, and she'll do uh, quite a good amount of damage. But then again, unlike the DK Bongos, they would deal with the insane amount of damage, how, of, depending on how fast you're going to be able to mash the actual Bongos. Well, in this version in particular, you have to do, like, a lot of... Uh, you know, motion mashing most of the time if you really want to deal with certain bosses a little bit quicker, so... But I digress. Oh okay, yeah, as far as you already know, that obviously the Wii version was actually be uh, inspired by the new Play Control series. Honestly, this is probably is the best of the forms of the new Play Control series in my opinion, despite how the fact they have to deal with a lot of motion mashing. Some people seem to say that both Pikmin 1 and Pikmin 2, uh, Pikmin 2 is a good to go when it comes to new play control series, but we no longer have those games basically just because of, well, trying to give up on trying to able to expect to able to be hyped for Pikmin 4, but then again, it really takes a long time to able to make those games or anything like that. Plus, we still have the coronavirus issue, so even then uh, we, there's nothing we can do here, so... Anyway, we managed to get ourselves, of course, all three crests, but all in the same color, so even then, no. I think this is actually based off from, I would say, silver crests, if I recall, not so much for platinum, just because of the actual color scheme is actually slightly different, so, yeah, I already tried that, so even then, no, there's no point for showing me that off again. But anyway, let's just go ahead and quit. Now, there's another difference here in that too, is the fact that once you're able to obtain all the crowns, especially all the crests in that barrel, then you were able to unlock the Secret Kingdom. Now, if you're probably wondering, is it the Apple Kingdom? Well, turns out you're wrong, because in this version you get, it's just a pair of kingdom. Which meaning, about the fact that, well, since we've done with those three normal kingdoms, now we can move on to the forms of the next barrel, in the Wii version, which is specifically the K-Barrel Kingdoms, which, unlike the GameCube version, that we've only got one more kingdom left on the D-Barrel, which is of course the Apple Kingdom, as you can see right here. So in this case, in this version, we got the Apple Kingdom from here, so yeah, I'd like to take a break, thank you. So anyways, we're gonna have to end things off at this point right there, so join us next time for more of Let's Play of Donkey Kong Jungle Beat for the Nintendo GameCube and Nintendo Wii versions, is the fact that we're gonna be taking on the forms of the next kingdom, which is the Apple Kingdom, so hopefully we should be able to actually get ourselves some more progression from this point here, so see you guys until on Wednesday. Later, fellas.